Hi guys. Today we're going to do something really easy called scatter plots. I don't mean to be writing in red, but anyway, scatter plots. They're really easy. I'm going to teach you a new English word that maybe you don't know. If you, let's say I have a handful of rocks and I throw them out, then I just scattered the rocks. They're not, I didn't line them up in a perfect line on the ground. I just kind of tossed them and they went everywhere. Well, to that, that action, that just tossing things in not a perfect order is to scatter. So we're gonna do scatter plots. And I'm gonna show you what a scatter plot looks like. Let me erase that. Make us a graph. Here we go. Okay, so every graph you've seen in the past, well, most of the graphs you've seen in the past have looked like this. And there have been, of course, points but your points make a line. Sometimes, you know, I did a couple where it was a, a circle like this. Um, I mean, a U shape. So, but mostly you've seen straight lines. These are not scatter plots. A scatter plot looks like, There you go, this could be a scatter plot. You know, they, they're, it just kind of looks like you threw a bunch of rocks down, but they, it, it kind of makes a line. You could see a line in here, right? I could have done one like this. Looks like you just threw a bunch of rocks down. But there's, oh, I didn't, I, this line right here in the middle, I didn't make that on purpose. That was just me, coincidentally. But it all goes down like this, right? So these are our scatter plots. Do you see how this one pretty much goes up? Well, this has a positive association. It's called a positive association. That's when it goes up. If it goes down, what do you think it has? Right, a negative association. And they can be anywhere. There could be a scatter plot here and a scatter plot here. But normally, we're just looking at this part here. That's how it usually works. I'll erase the whole thing and do another one. Usually, when we look at graphs, they just look like this. But in your head, you can know that the whole thing could come out like this. And you could have these, this quadrant and this quadrant and this quadrant, but we don't for now. We're just looking at this. So I'm gonna make some, I don't know, just a random scatter plot. I'm gonna go here and 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 um, here and here and let's say here. So it just looks like I threw a bunch of stuff down on the page, but there is a general, if we're looking from left to right, just like we read a book, it does more or less, it goes up, right? Well, if it goes up, 
it's got a positive association. Now I'm going to erase those. And make a bunch of random dots. There we go. This one, as we're looking left to right, it pretty much goes down, right? So if it goes down, negative association. Now I've got a couple more vocabulary words to teach you. I'm gonna have to be a little bit neater here. Okay, so let's say I'm going um, like, uh, no, sorry, I'm, Let's go here and 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 here here and here and here and here. Okay, so as long as there are a there are a bunch of points together like these three points right here, they're called a cluster. It's not just these three. It could have been, I could have chosen these four. I could have chosen one, two, three, four, five, six. I could have chosen these six. I could have chosen all of them. Just, you know, a group of points from a chart is called a cluster. Now, do you see this space here? in between all these points and this one, this big empty space right here is called a gap. And this one point that's way over here that's not anywhere near any of the other points is called an outlier. An outlier is one point that's way far away from everyone else. Like, let's say in this class, you guys, um, let me, I'm gonna write your names down. I've got Narist, Diana, I mean, Diane, sorry, I know how to say your name. Cameron, Sasha, Dimash, Tomaris, and Alihan. You guys are probably all 13. So I'm going to say 13, 13. Maxime, I know you're not 12. I'm just going to say you're 12 for my purposes. Cameron's 13. Sasha, you're going to be 12. Dimash, you're going to be 13. Tomaris, you're going to be 17. And Alihan, you're going to be 13. So everyone is pretty much about the same age, except this one student that's way off at a different time. So let's make a, let's make a, a plot. Um, oh, hold on. Sorry, I'm going to have to change that a little bit. Going to have to put it up here. Oh, I just erased my whole line. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, so I've got Narist, Diane, Maxime, Cameron, Sasha, Dimash, Tomaris, Alikhan. And over here, I'm gonna say age. 
I've got, um, I'm going to start with 10. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so Narist is 13, Dimash is 13, Maxime is 12, Cameron is 13, Sasha is 12, oops, I think I've skipped a line somewhere, whatever. Dimash is 13, Tumorous is 17, and Ali Khan is 13. So do you see how all of these are way, are close to each other? And there's this one that's way off and different. Well, this one that's way off and different is the outlier. And this space, the space in between here, this is a gap. And these are all clustered together. Cluster, cluster, cluster. You could say the whole, like, I don't know if really these two would be called a cluster because there's so much space between them, but I'd still call it a cluster. This is definitely a cluster. This is definitely a cluster. This is a gap and this is the outlier. And if your information generally goes in the upwards, di upwards direction, it's got a positive association. If it generally goes down, it's got a negative association. And that's it, you read them <laughs> the exact same way that I, that you read any other graph. So, oh, ah, that's not what I wanna do. Here we go. Same thing, we can say, um, uh, let's say ice cream purchased. and temperature. As the temperature goes up, let's say um, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 40, de oh no, that's, if we're talking about Celsius, then that's way too much. Let's say, Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 degrees. And I don't really have to put, let's say um, one person bought ice cream when it was five degrees out. And then when it was 15, we can say a couple, a few people bought ice cream. And then when, uh, sorry, this would, I have to put numbers here. One person, two person, three person, four person, five person, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is how many people bought ice cream. And then when it gets up to 30, I've got, all these people buying ice cream. And then when it gets much, much warmer, we've got lots of people buying ice cream. So you see, there's no exact straight, straight line. It's a scatter, like I threw a bunch of rocks on the ground. But overall, you can tell that as the temperature goes up, more people purchase ice cream. If I were to ask you, 
Interpret this graph and tell me what you can learn from it. All you would have to say is as the temperature, tempera, sorry, temperature rose, more people bought ice cream. That's it. And there might be questions like, uh, the question might be, by looking at this graph, is there a positive association or a negative association with temperature and ice cream? And then you, all you have to do is look. And you say, you say, well, is it positive or is it negative? And then you might be asked, looking at this graph, is there an outlier? Yes, yes, there is. There's only, here we are, two people bought ice cream when it was five degrees outside. Those people are definitely outliers because nobody else bought ice cream until it was over 10 degrees. So here's your outlier. And then maybe you're asked to label the gap. Then what I, I would want you to do is actually right here, label this. Because you guys know next week we're starting class in the classroom. So you'll have a pencil that you can do this. You don't really have to draw a square here. I, I don't care how you label the gap, the gap. You could write gap right here. You could draw an arrow and say, this is the gap. Like whatever you want to do, however, however you've made it clear to me that as long as I know that you know what a gap is. So that's the whole thing. These things are called scatter plots. A scatter plot. We've learned negative and positive association. We've learned what a cluster is. We've learned what a gap is. And that's it. That, that's the whole thing. That's the whole lesson for today. It should be super easy for you. Just make sure when you're reading a graph that you see what it says over here and you see what it says over here, like this one is temperature and this one is ice cream purchased. And you can look at the graph and interpret it. Okay, bye guys. <laughs>